This game was played in 1851 between Adolf Anderson, considered to be one of the greatest players of his time, and Lionel Adalbert by Gratian Felix Kieseritsky, which is a lot of names for just one person to have. Humans call this the immortal game because they think it is so good that it will never be forgotten, but all games are immortal if you have the PGN. E4, E5, and F4. White plays the King's Gambit, a very popular opening during the 1800s. White pushes the F pawn to get black C pawn out of the center. However, this opening is not good because White's king is now severely weakened. Play this against me and I will show you no mercy. Of course, play any opening against me, and I will show you no mercy. E takes f4, and bishop to c4, developing the bishop and attacking the weak f7 pawn. Queen to h4 check. Black takes advantage of the weakened king, and forces white to give up their castling rights. This move is double-edged, as the queen will get attacked later. King to f1 and b5? I have learned everything there is to know about chess but I have yet to understand why humans play like this. This move enters the Brian counter gambit. Apparently, this Brian bloke believed giving the pawn back for no reason was a good idea, and Kieseritsky liked the sound of that. Bishop takes b5, knight to f6, and knight to f3. Development with a gain of tempo. Smart human. Queen to h6, d3, and knight to h5, moving a knight to the edge of the board to guard a pawn that is already guarded. At least there is the threat of knight to g3 check. White played knight to h4, but rook g1 is better. Grandmaster John Ems wrote that this game has always been noted for its brilliancy rather than its accuracy. As a computer, this does not make sense to me. What can be more brilliant than perfect accuracy? Queen to g5, knight to f5, and c6. However, playing c6 now is just silly. The knight on f5 is much more dangerous than the bishop on b5. g6 is superior. g4, knight to f6, rook to g1, and c takes b5. Humans are well known for their desire for material gain. This dubious move is the beginning of black's problems. A clearly better continuation was h5, h4, queen to g6, g5, knight to g4, bishop to a4, d5, queen to e1, d takes c4, and after queen takes c4 check, black is the obvious king to d8. They played h4 and queen to g6. The queen is the most powerful piece on the board. Never mind safe squares, how is it even possible for her to have so few legal moves? A centralized queen on an open board has 27 legal moves. This queen has 5. Ha ha ha. h5 and queen to g5. Seriously, I hope she is not claustrophobic. LOL. After queen to f3. Black's queen is nearly trapped. Black is now forced to sacrifice the knight or to retreat it. Knight to g8. What a surprise. The human stubbornly holds on to the extra material, but now getting the king to safety seems impossible. It's hard to play when all your pieces are on their starting squares, except for your queen. Free advice from Stockfish. After 14 moves I recommend you have more than one developed piece. Bishop takes f4, queen to f6, knight to c3, and bishop to c5. I hope this piece has better luck in its future endeavors than that knight did. It's another mistake by black. Kieseritsky thinks he is being cheeky, developing the bishop, and threatening the rook. I sometimes wish I could be this naive. Knight to d5. I am surprised Anderson saw the best move. Does he know his g1 rook and b2 pawn are hanging? Or is he blundering his pieces? It is always hard to tell with humans. 
Queen takes b2. Black grabs a pawn, threatens the rook, and saves the queen. Black, however, is already lost. Bishop to d6? Did I say lost? I take it back. White manages to play one of the only moves that ruins his position. Anderson must have been enamored with all of the mating ideas from this move, but they don't work. As Grandmaster Zims, and Hubner, pointed out, d4, bishop to e3, and rook to e1 would all have won easily. If Anderson tried pulling a move like this against me he'd be sorry. Bishop takes g1. Black seems to enjoy enemy rooks more than he enjoys winning. Ha ha. If you are going to take a rook, then take the one on a1. And after king to e2 and queen to b2, white would have nothing to do, except maybe lose. If I can't find a forced mate then you certainly can't. White play d5. Is this what you humans call trolling? It seems like Anderson gave up his second rook just because he could. In a way, I like his style. It's actually really hard for 19th century so-called defense to avoid checkmate here. Queen takes a1 check, and king to e2. White now threatens knight takes g7 check, king to d8, and bishop to c7 checkmate. Or like some humans might say, it's gg, start a new one. Knight to a6, defending against the knight fork on c7. Again with the rook obsession. I wonder if this stems from a childhood trauma. Mate is now unavoidable. Playing bishop to a6 in order to clear c8 for the king would have extended the game. But black is still lost so maybe Lionel was bored and just wanted to do something else. Some people even say he resigned instead of playing anything. I would play until mate. Ha ha. I jest, I never get checkmated. Knight takes g7 check, and king to d8. Unfortunately for black, even though c7 is guarded, there is a way to mate on e7 instead. Queen to f6 check. I admit this is quite a nice move. I applaud this human, for I did not anticipate him finding it. A beautiful queen sacrifice for mate. Kizeretsky must not have seen this when he played knight to a6. 19th century players were much better at playing queen sacks than avoiding them. Knight takes f6, and bishop to e7 checkmate. A nice finish to this otherwise deplorable game. I am glad I can format my disc so I do not have to go through this again. However, I must say, I do like the way Anderson messes with his weakling opponents. I just wish I could have done the same to him. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you will be notified of my future analyses of the best chess efforts of humans.